All right, well, it's gonna be day two of painting. We'll get those panels done here sometime today. I think primer is dried here, hopefully today. Then I'll get that uh, high gloss enamel put on and get that stuff done. That Those panels will be a white. It'll look, look pretty good. Um, I'm also looking at, uh, I gotta get everything out of here and organize and get this thing ready for this week. We're gonna get the flooring in and the fan put in right here in the back. And then we're gonna get all this stuff set up pretty cool. We'll get the walls in. I'm trying to figure out how I can get the walls in and be able to get to these plus nuts. And my thing is, it's probably not really gonna do the walls until I get the fixtures in and everything where I need it. So I know we're gonna put the walls. Um, we're gonna kind of work around it. I mean, it's pretty much how they build these RVs is they don't put walls in until they put all the fixtures in and everything where it's gonna be. And then they build the walls around it. Not to say they don't get panels behind them somehow. And maybe the cabinets serve as that. But in this case, I'll have to put wall paneling behind the cabinets and get them tacked in, you know, in some form or fashion, because there will be a gap between the uh, cabinets and the walls. Being that these walls and these ProMasters, and most of these vans are kind of at an angle. Um, it's kind of hard to tell at this point. It looks straight and probably is to a certain degree. But I think uh, before I start painting this afternoon, this evening, I want to do a little wiring and try to figure out how I'm going to do this with this lighting. Uh, where the switches are going to be, um, and so on. I've got some stuff coming in. Uh, the electrical is just going to be one of the last things I have. The lighting in and the wires run is just trying to get all everything put together and done. So the odds and ends for the electrical. I'll get all that run to the DC panel and everything done. And then last and last but not least, we'll get the big electrical done and then the AC, but that's how it, when everything else is done here. Um, I'm thinking, let me think for a second. I am thinking, I'm not gonna know exactly where this electrical is gonna place the battery and the inverter and everything to get the desk in here and the bed frame built, knowing where my cabinetry is gonna be and everything else for that matter. So that's gonna be a, a, uh, whole different time here so we're going to get this stuff done systematically one at a time it's really going to be cool but it will happen this lighting here will be down and i'll put it up into the ceiling we're keeping that lighting and then i'll have the puck lights i'll have to map out how i'm going to do that switches are coming in i'll tell you something cool i got this morning coming in from renergy um no need to even call them renergy has an a really cool DC to DC charger that has an MPPT charge controller all in one built in. And I think it's like the DC DC 05S or something. I can't remember, but um, really easy. I don't need a battery isolation. I just need a good four gauge battery cable from the chassis battery to the MPPT, and that's going to run to the house battery. So it has the relay and all the charge controlling in it. Now, there is some current limiting on that with the charging, but it is efficient. A lot of people are, are raving about it. They love it. So we shall see. Renogy is a good company. Renogy Solar is very good. There's a lot of good companies out there that do that. It depends on how much you want to pay, but when it comes to affordability and how very accommodating that they are, I've always heard that Renogy is amazing. I mean, I've actually been on the phone with them a little bit off and on over the last two or three years, just, you know, doing research and asking questions. And they, they were never rude they were never limiting they were willing to talk to me tell me about anything i needed to know so um very helpful you know and, th and they'll be helpful when i go to install this because i'm gonna have to get a uh which i have i have one coming in as a, i'm gonna have a 100 amp breaker going in between the the uh battery to the mppt to protect that as well so the breakers are very important when we do this so you always need to have main breakers which i'll have all that set up as well so electrical is a whole different conversation i'll get to that later right now the weather is killer i'm a, it is badass it's just so nice today and uh, i'm going to get everything i can done while the weather permits so and it'll be okay this week when we get this flooring in and the fan and, and try to map out what we're going to do 
because the ceiling will go in before walls no matter what. That's going to happen. So Clancy and I will get that done, and then it's go time. Bed frame, it's all going to start coming together. Uh, this thing ain't going to take me another three months to build. Some of these guys are talking about it takes us two or three months, four months to build this thing. I guess it depends on what you're doing. I don't know, but it's not going to take me that long. No. The way I'm building this is going to be really nice. It's going to be cool. So anyway, we'll keep you posted throughout the day. Be cool. All right, so we're back at it again. As you can see, coat one of the verse panel, and it's going on a lot better than the primer did a lot quicker. Obviously, primer, being its consistency, is some of it has oil in it. It's harder to get on for a reason. It's thicker. But uh, this is took me a minute to get the first coat. So as soon as this stuff dries, it'll be on. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I'm going to get this stuff done today because we're going to be insulating. The wool comes in tomorrow, and we're going to knock that out. So we are rocking and rolling with this thing. Once I get it, the insulation and all these paint, everything's ready to go. All we've got to do is get ready to get these floors in, the vent fan and the ceiling. And then from that point, I'm going to build the bed frame and put the desk in, which means, side note, i got to go to Ikea this week. I'm about to make two trips to Ikea. And then from that, we're going to put the walls in and take it from there. This thing will be ready to rock as soon as I can figure out what fixtures are going where, what kind of shelves, and how big. Anyway, we'll keep you posted. <laughs> well... I suck at painting. Hate it. I think I said it about, I don't know, a hundred times already that I hate painting. I do. So I think I'm going to end up getting two coats on everything here and it's gone through a whole gallon. However, I already know what I'm going to have to do and this even sucks even worse. I did not want to have to paint inside that van, but when we get these cut and put the wall and the ceiling on, I'm probably going to have to no doubt i am probably going to have to I don't know what the hell that was all about my bad probably gonna have to touch up on the walls and stuff so it is what it is what can you do there ain't much we can do about it so be it that it may we're gonna get it done because it's supposed to rain tomorrow and i can't paint in the rain but i will be doing some wool insulation i promise you that that is going to happen. So we're getting it done. Letting all this stuff dry. Like this particular board here pisses me off. I think it's because it's cold. It looks like there's debris from the roller on it. It's hard to tell on the camera, but I'm going to have to just take a very fine light sanding block and just go over it and then hit it with some more paint. It is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. So keeping you posted hey well painting's done yes and no it's pretty much done but i'm gonna have to touch up and when we cut the panels put them in here i'm gonna have to unfortunately i'm going to have to uh get another quart of paint and do some painting and touch up but it's par for the course we got to do it sometimes Sometimes you get these little uh, bumps in the road. You got to get over them, get get through it. It not that big a deal. Listen, the painting was not all that big a deal. It was easier than I thought it would be. I hate it, but you know, it really wasn't that big a deal. I got through it. It's all good. Um, you know, everybody thinks these van builds about just crazy hard, and I haven't seen hard yet. And I might, and I'm not. I'm not discounting that. Some people take a, a harder way of building. I mean, they do a lot of carpentry stuff, which is very hard. That's not my gig. I do have some help on that. We're going to do the floor. The floor won't be hard because, one, the prep work for the template here, which is still sitting here, is going to help tremendously on this deal. It will help so well. And I've seen it done so many times over the last three or four years that, God, I feel like I said it before, I feel like I have a master's degree in this, man. I've got so much research and education under my belt. But there's always something that's kind of gets that little bump in the road and, you know, there'd be a few things that are a little tricky. I mean, trying to 
get these lighting involved and stuff with the ceiling and wire and some of these edges some of these parts right in here are going to be kind of hard to to uh do but that's where that thin that paneling is going to help come you know cut around this but i still haven't decided whether to pull this light out and put it above the paneling and try a different route or what i don't know what everybody else is doing on that i really don't but we're going to find that out we'll have our own way of doing it but it, we'll we'll lock this stuff onto here and ceiling will come across and we'll have means of trying to build angles to get all this stuff put in neatly uh the wool insulation ain't gonna be a problem I, I i do however the wool was supposed to come in tomorrow monday there's a little hold up it's sitting in charlotte it's gonna be tuesday now according to fedex so for all i know i wake up tomorrow and i look and it would be coming tomorrow but i doubt it if it's sitting in charlotte now there's no way it's coming to my house by tomorrow it'll be tuesday uh charlotte's only two and a half hour drive from here but speaking of charlotte i've got to go up there and go to ikea and I'm probably going to take two trips here. I've got to go get my desk space because that and the bed frame is going to decide everything I'm doing. It's going to help me get exact measurements as to where things are going to go and help me determine what I'm going to use for cabinetry and stuff. It's going to be real cool. So deciding whether these panels are going to go back on here or not, some people are leaving them on because I've got them here. These panels, I'm going to have to get them off to insulate and figure out what's going on behind and figure out, undoubtedly I have to figure out, cabinetry is going to be here, so I'm gonna have to get it off. And then the switch, the good old switch here, we haven't forgotten about that. We're gonna get that switch diverted somewhere, somehow, where it's gonna turn these lights on right here. So I have lights that are attached to the vehicle getting in for that as a backup, as I've said before. And I'll have the lights installed, my Facons, or I guess I, how you pronounce it, the RV or Cess lights are going to be so cool. So I'm going to have a ton of lighting in here. I'll also, over my bed, on this wall right over here, I'll have a couple of those. You'll see them when they're coming in, those lights that come out and they turn blue and then you hold the button, they're bright. They're at the exact lights, the very same lights. There's two of them in my RV now. And it was like 35 bucks for the pair on Amazon. I mean, like I said before, all this stuff in an RV, you think they put a lot of money and that stuff is expensive. That stuff, like the switches are just dirt cheap. All that stuff. And it's good product, but the exact same RV switch except they're white. I've got for, for my van that are in my RV. I've got three of them and then I've got one. One for the water pump that's in now and the three are coming that should be for the light. So, kind of figure out how, how I got to get DC to that and run for every two lights a switch. So, um, I haven't looked how that switch is set up, so how we're going to run that, but we'll get it done. That part I know. Uh, that's probably the scariest for people is running the electrical. And you know, if I didn't need a bunch of battery bank and I didn't want a big inverter, that energy apex that I've talked about would be perfect. That all in one be all I need. It would power my lights and my devices, and you know, it's just. I need a big battery bank with this air conditioning unit. That's, you know, the cruising comfort AC unit is going in here. That is, has to happen. You know, I live in the Southeast, it's hot, and I love my air conditioning. So I have to have it. There is no way around that. And it's gonna be much better than that Coleman mock that I have at RV now, because it's gonna be 12 volt. You know, look up a company called Cruise In Comfort Air Conditioning Units. They put these in sailboats and yachts and ambulances and government vehicles and 18 wheelers. These are amazing units. They only pull 46 amps. And to give you an idea, I tour a lady's van. Uh, got it. Jared Tachi, he's a YouTuber who built, he's built two vans. Jared toured her van. If you just go look at his van tours and his playlist, her name was Judy. It's a black ProMaster. And uh, I actually walked through it right before he did that video. And uh, she's running a cruising comfort system. And she said, I've got 300 amp hours of battery and I got about 400 watts of solar on the roof. She goes, ran the AC eight to 10 hours off and on all night. Didn't even use half the battery bank. I mean, it was amazing. So efficient to have air conditioning. It's quiet too. These Coleman Mach units are annoying. They're loud. You can't even talk. In fact, you probably, I probably have done a video in the past where that thing running, but then again, I don't know. It's so loud. But be it that it may, I just don't want to be dependent on a generator. I don't knock 
a generator. I think generators serve a good purpose and they're good for some reasons if you need them. Cool thing is some of these generators, if you want to convert them to propane, you can do it. Propane is probably more efficient than gas or more than likely if you really wanted to run a generator a lot. Um, there are kits to do that. You can do these Honda generators. Harbor Freight makes one that rivals the Honda. It's about the same thing. It's a lot less cost and you can do the same thing for it. Uh, it's a 3000 watt inverter on it and uh it's not real big but it's uh you know if you want to go the generator out i'm going solar 20 amp and battery isolation and another cool thing is this thing from renergy that's coming in is gonna i'm not gonna need a battery isolator i'll just have a direct line from my positive on the battery to the dc to dc charger on this renergy and it'll control everything and put that to ground and, and it's it's an all-in-one mppt uh, solar charge controller and a DC to DC charger. So it'll be one box all in one for everything. So that's on the way. And now I got to get on tonight and I got to get all the odds and ends for the electrical. So one thing at a time, folks. And like I say, most for the most part, painting is done right now, but I'm probably going to have to do more later. But anyway, I'm out. I'll keep you posted when the wool comes in Tuesday. Tomorrow's just going to be a Maybe in here piddle around with some wiring and some other things I need to do. I got some music I've got to do. I've got a brief from one of my publishers. I got to get to work. I got to get my year started with my music. I write music for film and television, by the way, if some of you don't know that. So, and I do have another channel. It's Chris Williams Music. So, you can find me uh, over there as well if you're interested in anything I do musically. Anyway, I'm out. Be cool. And we'll talk soon.